Hello and welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. We are on module number 5, lecture number 4. This lecture, the concluding part of this module, exclusively on writing skills related to sending job application, enclosing that with biodata, CV or a resume, is now to be concluded on this fourth part of the lecture, lecture number 4 on resume. In the previous two lectures, already I had discussed with you about the differences between a biodata CV and a resume. Instead of telling you what is a resume, I just want to begin with telling you what is not a resume. So, first try to clearly understand what is not a resume because between a biodata and a resume, you can say that the differences is like between two poles. So, they are sometimes poles apart. Although they are treated synonymously with each other, it is not correct because of the cultural variations. Now, what is not a resume? First of all, a resume is not a biodata sent to an Indian employer. Okay. Even if you send a resume to an Indian employer, it should not be in the format of a biodata. What is it? It is basically sent when you apply for a job in the US. Understand the cultural variation or to an MNC of US base or a company that is oriented towards Americanized way of uh, life custom and it is looking for a resume. I am going to spend more time on resume because globally today people are more inclined towards getting a resume than a biodata on the one hand and on the other hand there are European organizations even in the US people are thinking that sometimes a resume is too short and then they are inclined towards getting more in terms of biodata than a resume. So, both turn is possible, but assuming the fact that resume is something that is most popular and people are demanding this now, try to understand how this is different from first biodata. Cultural ignorance between a biodata and a resume, particularly in terms of an Indian sending a resume abroad, cultural ignorance of the West should not be reflected in the application, should not be reflected in the resume that you send it. So, I am just going to give you some tips by which you are able to identify, understand the cultural variations which can actually play havoc when you send a resume. What is a resume? A resume is the means by which a prospective employer considers you for a job. It is just a means by which prospective employer considers you for a job, that is a resume. And you can say that there are good resumes and bad resumes, a good resume is one that gets you the job, that gets you the call letter at least for the interview. It should of course get you the job, they should be impressed right from the beginning. A bad resume affects you adversely despite your exceptional credentials. You may be a gold medalist, you may be national first in certain thing, but you send a bad resume, it creates a very poor impression and they see you through the paper, not you in flesh and blood before they call you for the interview. In most of the cases in US, they do not even call you for the interview, they call you on phone or today they call you on video conferencing mode, but even before calling they decide whether they should call you or not based on the resume, that paper that you have sent. So, bad one can completely mar your career. A resume reveals more about you in terms of your writing skills, ability to express ideas clearly, succinctly, with minuteness to details, sharp career focus. So, what a resume is doing is just not giving a focus to your career, but also it is trying to showcase your talent in terms of your writing skills, communication skills and your choice of vocabulary. So, all these things comes into play when you write a resume. What is not a resume again? Resume as it reveals, it also conceals certain things. A resume conceals as much as it reveals. A good resume writer must have learnt the art of concealing and designing a resume. If you are skilled, you must have mastered by this time what to conceal as well as what to put it and design it 
in a proper manner. Resume writing is like a knot. A biodata that works well in India need not work well with US employers. So, again the misconception is that this biodata is well written and it has got you very good lucrative job offers from India, but why not you send the same biodata abroad, especially to US. Now, that is a misconception because it worked here, it will not work there in the US if you send the same biodata. Recent cultural variations and cultural awareness help in writing an effective resume or modifying your biodata in the form of a resume. Now, what is not a resume again? Resume is not a shopping list. So, in biodata it is ok that you itemize, you write 1, 2, 3, 4 just like in a shopping list you write 1, 2, 3, 4, but in resume it is not a shopping list, serial numbers for items serve no purpose here. Hence, it should be avoided. So, avoid serial numbering in resume. Then understand that resume is not a matrimonial response. People are not asking you to send your beautiful or handsome looking photographs, color photographs taken in studio with lot of beautiful scenery backdrop, so that the person looks at your face and gets attracted and makes that lifetime decision. No, it is not a matrimonial response. Photos are not to be enclosed at all unless they ask you to do so. Most of the American employers will not ask you to enclose the photograph. The only time perhaps that you need to use a photograph is when you apply for visa. Okay. So, that again is not going with your resume, that is a different job altogether. So, that is the only time that you may be asked to use a photograph, otherwise when you plan to go for US, usually in resume photos are not pasted. Understand it is your resume, not your dad's. So, in a biodata you tend to write father's name and even father's occupation, but in a resume the candidate's father's name is not to be mentioned, even the occupation. Thinking that the father's occupation, especially in a country like India, so if the father is of uh, chief minister of some state or it is in the uh, prime minister's cabinet. Now, these things matter in getting some jobs, whereas these things do not make any difference in the US. What the father is has nothing to do with what the son or the daughter will be able to prove in terms of their credentials and abilities in getting that job. So, keep that in mind. It is your resume and it is not your company's. What people do mostly is that if they are in a good company, they think that using the company's letterhead will give them a cutting edge, will create a better impression about them. Now, this is not true and in fact, it can create a very bad impression, terribly bad impression when you are using that letterhead and people may think that you have done it in poor taste. So, avoid doing that, resume sketches personal profile it is your personal profile, but when you are using company's letterhead, you are adding the company's profile which is unwanted, irrelevant and it definitely causes a terribly bad negative impression. Now, there are certain no's in resume which are positive yes in a biodata. What is no? No sex, especially in an American context, no need to mention age, no need to mention your religious affinity no need to talk about your marital status, whether you are married or alone, whether you are divorced, whether you are second married, whether you have children or not. These things of your life do not matter, they do not care about it. Your vital statistics, your height, weight, color, hair color, skin color, the location of the mole, all these things will not matter. In fact, it can even create a very ridiculous impression about you. So, avoid all these personal details and it should not be mentioned at all. In the US, the employer will not ask for certain things such as your marital position, 
suggest whether you have some kind of affair with somebody, whether you are engaged or not engaged, okay, they will avoid these things and certain other things related to your religious affinity, sex and all that, even it is illegally not allowed, the employer is not supposed to ask you these questions. You have every right to say no, if you are asked. If you are further pressurized, you can even assume that that is a kind of harassment and you can defend your position. But understand, when you send a resume, these are all definite no's, you do not have to mention all these ones. The next important thing that you should know in terms of writing a good resume and sending a buy data as such, thinking that it is a resume is the difference in terms of the degree that you send. Even a simple BE degree, you think that is understandable for the people in the US, you think that BE is BE, but no, you should say it in full form. For example, if you write something like MCHE, I got MCHE. Now, what is it? Is it Masters in Chemical Engineering? So, is there a degree like this? Who is giving this? Even for an Indian, it is very difficult to find out what is this degree. Or is it Masters in Child, Healthcare and Environment? People can make lot of inferences about this degree, unless you say clearly what is it. So, one golden rule, especially when you send resume related to your degree is, do not abbreviate the degrees, give the full form, even if it is B Tech, say Bachelor of Technology and if you want within bracket you write B Tech. Even if it is M E, you write Masters in Engineering and within bracket you write M E. So, do not take for granted the abbreviations that you use will be easily understandable or it will make sense for the Americans at the other side. And one more step is that, if possible, give an equivalent American degree. So, if there is an equivalent one, you can bracket it, put it in parenthesis and say that this is the equivalent American degree. So, it will help the employer to understand, okay, you have done something similar to this. Another confusion that comes when you write a resume is, how do you address the people? Is it Sir or Sri? Now, in an Indian context, Sriman, Srimati, so shortened to Sri, Srimati, okay, SMT, SRI, so that is okay. So, you can write and you can think that it is much more dignified than even using Mr. or uh, Mrs. And some people even like it when you call them as Srimati instead of Mrs and so on. Now, that is fine, but when you are sending it abroad, when you are sending it to the US, refer people by the English titles Mr or Mrs or Ms. If you are not sure of whether the person is Miss or uh, Mrs. Leave Sri or Srimati if it is part of the name. So, suppose if it is just the title of the university, let us say there is a university by name Sri Ramachandra Technological University. In that case, you cannot remove this Sri and say Ramachandra Technological University, then you must have misnamed or not given the correct name of the university. When it forms part of the name, part of the title, then you leave it. But if you are addressing a person, try to use the English titles, Mr, Mrs and so on. The next question that comes to mind and uh, very often mistakes are uh, being committed here is, uh, should you use black and white or color ink? Should you use a white paper or a color paper, yellow, pink, green? Now, the answer is absolute no neither use color paper nor use color ink, using highlighter, sketch pens or using color ink cartridge itself. Okay. Now, all these things should be avoided, what is the reason? So, again you are applying for a job in which you want to focus your career, 
you do not want them to get distracted by unusually attractive fonts, colors okay, and they are bogged down in looking at that on the one hand. On the other hand, most of the times you do not even apply, you scan and send it or they may ask you to fax it. Now, when you fax it, whatever you had done it in the form of highlighting, whatever you have used in the form of color pencils, color sketches, now these things will appear very vague and unclear. Now, in order to give clarity to what you have written, always go for black and white combination which is safe and secure. But you may ask, what should I do? I want to highlight certain things. I want them to look at that particular part immediately. I want to focus that skill. Now, in that case, use bold letters. So, you can you can just you know how to bolden it, you can thicken it or you can use italics or you just underline or you use caps or even vary the font size not just the size, even you change the font. Suppose you want to describe something and you want to give the feel that you want to make it look like you are using your handwriting, use monotype uh, cursive or any kind of uh, cursive thing. So, if you want to say something quite informal and at the same time you do not want uh, uh, them to uh, take it so informal. So, the comic sans gives you that kind of look. Now, decide the font, otherwise the standard times new roman 12, 13, 14, not less than 10, okay. the standard readable one is from 12 to 14 with double space preferably, but if you want to shorten it at least 1.5 space. So, that is the readability level by which you can send a resume. Again the question of paper, what size should the paper be? Should it be A4, which we use normally for our printouts? Should it be full scape? So, like the one you use it in your composition notebooks, should it be of that size or letter size paper? which we rarely use except in letter heads. Now, you have to use letter size paper, the size that is 8.5 inches by 11 inches, 8.5 inches by 11 inches letter size paper and you should also leave about 1 inch margin. Although you want to condense lot of thing there, leave sufficient margin, do not give this crammed look by reducing the margin. This is one reason. The other reason, if you reduce the paper size or if you put lot of details, but then if you reduce the margin, when you send it by fax, the ones on the edge will not appear. Same thing goes for A4 size. If you send everything on A4 size and most of the US fax machines go by this letterhead size, letter size paper. Now, in that case what happens, the items which are typed, printed on the edges, margins, so they get lost. So, they do not get the complete resume, they get only partial resume. So, take care, so it is not worth saving some space in terms of page and then losing your entire resume and career opportunity. And take care of the idioms, phrases, expressions which are okay, which are fine in an Indian context, but which are not okay, which can give contrary meaning, opposite meaning in the US cultural context. Take the example which is very common in educational parlance in India, passing out. I passed out in 1984, I passed out this examination. In the US, you do not pass out, you graduate. Now, what is the difference between pass out? Pass out as you know, some of you must be knowing, it simply means you faint, you swoon, you fell unconscious. So, just like uh, you take lot of uh, liquor and then you pass out, 
you fell unconscious. Okay. But what you mean to say is you graduate. So, do not say I passed out in 2010, you better say I graduated in 2010. Avoid using this kind of expressions which will give especially different entirely different meaning in a different cultural context in the US. So, avoid using these expressions, be aware of using these ones. Now, how to name some of our uh, referees? Should, should you change some of the names to suit their needs? Of course, not, there is no need to change. So, they are able to pronounce Michel Piffer, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, even the non-American citizens names, so the Americans are able to pronounce it without any problem. So, they can also pronounce Indian names, absolutely no problem. But what should you be doing? You should be giving some key for pronouncing. You can write it in the alphabetical manner or even if you can give pronunciation key within brackets that is fine, but tell them how to pronounce it. So, if A is to be elongated, put 2 A within bracket indicating that that part is elongated. So, they will understand. Now, Indian names are difficult to pronounce for them unless you give it in terms of pronunciation key, it is very difficult. So, mention the way the name should be uh, pronounced. So, include the ones in the references also because they are going to call these people. The references, the professors from whom you have uh, given names as references and imagine suppose you have three names like Professor K A T E. So, for the American this will be Kate, whereas you know that it is an Indian name, typical Maharashtra name. So, according to that regional variation it is Kate, not Kate and for the European or the American P A S T E may sound as paste, that the actual Indian pronunciation is paste and then H A T E may sound as for the foreigners hate hate. Now, imagine a funny ridiculous, but dangerous situation where uh, they are calling the referees and uh, coincidentally these are your referees and the employer calls and asks may I speak to professor Kate. So, he says I am Kate, he says no professor Kate. So, there is altercation, he is fed up. The employer thinks then he should call the next person and then he calls the person and he asks Am I speaking to Professor uh, Paste? So, Professor Paste gets angry, he says there is no paste. So, he does not understand, the employer does not understand why the professor got angry. Then he goes to the next one and then he says, uh, he thinks already I am fed up, what kind of referees are they? They are not even uh, encouraging a talk with them. How can I know about the candidate? And this is the last resort, and then he makes a call and then he is asking him. Am I speaking to Professor Hate? And then he gets a hate response, hateful response, really because Professor Hate is hurt. He thinks, what kind of person is he? He is not even able to utter my name correctly. And he is also angry with the candidate who has given his name without telling the person how it should be pronounced. So, be careful about using Indian names, including your name, names of uh, referees and tell them how it should be pronounced, use the pronunciation uh, key, letters, the whichever manner you make it easier for them, but make it clear to them by putting them in brackets. Now, in terms of let us say page numbers, how do you number the pages or is it really important that you should number the pages? Yes, it is important that you should number the pages, but will it be enough? if you put only the numbers, no, because if you just put only the numbers, when you fax it, so your one page goes in, they got it, but before you could send the second page, there was a communication gap, 
there was a fault response from your machine, their machine was also not receiving. In the meanwhile, they got another resume and then you sent the page second of yours, somebody also sent page second of uh, his or her own and it got intermixed. Now, to avoid this, it is important that you use your short name on the right top corner or on the bottom corner and then you can just add. Suppose it is uh, Sandhya Kumaraswamy, you can just write Sandhya 1, Sandhya 2, Sandhya 3 or you can even write Sandhya K 1, Sandhya K 2 okay, and so on. So, this gives them a easy way before reading your resume to arrange it in proper order. So, you should help them to do it. Now, in terms of the clock, the time actually ticks backward, the clock moves backward in the US, in what sense? So, usually the reverse chronological order is followed when the biological data, the career data, the life data is given to them. So, follow reverse chronological order for arranging, sequencing the items, you have to start with the latest first. So, suppose you started your career as a watchman and then you joined the organization as a daily worker, you are promoted to so many other things and then you became the manager and today you are the vice president of the company, start with the latest first, start with your position as the vice president of the company and you may go even up to the managerial level you had, even you can skip the daily worker post and the watchman post you had. Okay. That is not giving a good impression in terms of a resume. So, you understand, you focus on the best that you have got and the latest that you are now. What you were before is not relevant, whereas in a by data, what you were before is equally important, but here what you are now, what you are up to in the future, so that makes sense. And how would you spell a word like program? Is it P R O G R A M or P R O G R A M M E? program or program. Obviously, you understand that the difference is between American and British. So, double M E is British. So, you have color with U R and then without U, photo P H O T O and then whereas, it is American F O T O. So, which spelling should you use? Obviously, the answer is you should use American spelling when you are sending it to an American organization. Use American English expressions and spellings and when you use it, be consistent. So, inconsistency is another blender, major mistake that you will be committing, do not be inconsistent. So, when you use P O R G E R A M, use only that spelling throughout, do not use W M E. So, keep that in mind and use a dictionary, set your computer to spell check it in terms of American English. Nowadays, by default, so, most of the computers use American English, but ensure that it does it. Again, when it is time, when you are mentioning about the time that you are available for a reference, should you say the Indian or the US time? Again, obviously, you should mention the US time, you help them to understand that, because that helps them to call easily and that helps them to know when you will be available. So, be familiar with the US time be familiar with their US time zone, convert your time of availability to them, indicate by saying for example, I will be available at this number, this phone number Monday to Friday between 7 am and 9 am, 9 am Pacific time. So, this is Pacific time. So, the corresponding time in India you are available, but they are not bothered about that. You tell them Pacific time, so they will be able to contact according to their time zone. Same thing goes for address, when you write the address, address it in the American way. So, do not do it in the Indian way, because line 1 for the American it is street address and in the second line it is apartment number, third it is city followed by state and zip code and if it is a foreign mail, then country is also added. Now, you can see it is very clear, it is systematized, it is neatly done, orderly manner it is done. So, do not mess up this order. So, sequence it properly, use this order. And the other important 
thing that you should know and you should understand the difference between by data and a resume is that the use of date, the way we use it in India and the way the dates are used in the US. When you write something like 7, 8, 2011, what is the month? Is it July or August? 7 August in India, in British, but it will sound July 8 in American. In American context, month is written first in dates, whenever they write it. So, they will read 7 as July, not as August. The safe way, the safest way is to spell out the month. So, you give that in word form. So, you can write August 7, 2011. So, this makes it much simple and easier. What about referees? In India, even if some friend at a very high position, if you give the name of that person and the position, it may be of some credit to you. But in the US, it should be only professionals, not friends. So, friends, relatives in high positions do not make credible referees. Go for professors, go for supervisors, go for the principals, go for the directors, go for the vice presidents of your company. So, catch them, let them tell about your credentials, let them talk about your merits to your prospective employer. Having made it clear how a resume is different from a by data, let us look at the type of resumes. Unlike a by data, which is only of one type, when you talk about resume, there are styles, types, there are basically three styles in which you can present a resume. The first one and uh, of course, the one that is very close to by data is the chronological one. The second one is functional one and the third one is a combination of these two or sometimes even called as the hybrid style, which combines both chronological and the functional style of writing a resume. Now, in terms of chronological resume, what do you do? The chronological resume is the most popular and the conventional one. It also lists the work history, but unlike in a by data, it lists the latest one first. In this, what is the advantage for the employer? The employer can quickly see the educational and experience record. It is easy for him to see the education and experience record. It starts with name, address, telephone, mobile number, job objective, education. Suits if the candidate has wide experience and steady career growth. So, if you, if you can show the career progress and if you have wide experience, <coughs> it suits. Whereas, a person has very less experience, then he better goes for the next style, the next type, the functional one or the hybrid one. Now, the functional resume is also called as skill resume or skill resumes, because the focus is only on skill, focuses on skills rather than on past employment. Especially if you had breakups in your career, it is better to go for this functional resume, where it focuses only on the skills which are required for the present job, the job that you are applying for. It also starts with name, address, telephone, mobile number, job objective, education, but it substitutes skills for previous jobs. So, instead of previous job experience, it substitutes skills, it introduces skill sets. It highlights skills under special categories. So, under the category for example, communication, managerial skills, sales skills, organizational skills, marketing talents, marketing skills, etcetera. So, it categorizes under these aspects. Why do you use a functional resume? It is useful for those with breaks in job records. So, breaks in career, it is better you use functional one. It is beneficial to starters with no experience. So, you are inexperienced. So, you cannot say anything about your experience. So, you better use this. Skills can also be categorized under accomplishments instead of putting them under uh, 
separate skill category. It can also come under accomplishments, qualifications, areas of expertise and ability. What about this hybrid or combination resume? Now, here it combines the best features of both that is the chronological resume as well as this functional resume. What it highlights? It highlights skills and capabilities, but it also includes job history that is experience. It omits objective, it keeps open options includes references, whereas in some functional resumes they think that it is better to leave out the references, but here it includes the references although it omits the objective, because it keeps the options open. So, one can select this person for uh, various positions. Now, having discussed this, let us quickly look at the various parts of a resume and then analyze them. The resume basically contains the main heading or the heading, career objective following the heading, educational qualifications, work experience, employment history, skills and capabilities, awards, honors and activities okay, in terms of your achievements, personal data and references. Now, let us look at these aspects one by one and then look at some examples, so that you are able to understand this when you are going to write your own resume. First, we will start with the main heading. What do we mean by main heading of a resume? The resume begins with name, address, telephone, mobile number, email address, which is placed on the center of the resume or sometimes placed on the right side corner also or sometimes for aesthetically pleasing one, the name and important details are kept in the center and on the left side you have either email and on the right side you have the phone number. Whatever it is, the main heading is starting with this name, address, telephone number etcetera. Use the current address. In resume, you do not use the permanent address. Use the one that is functional or what you call as address for communication. Use the present one, current one. Uncluttered main heading starts with a good impression, which means if you leave it in a clutter, it creates a bad impression. So, avoid that. Use very simple format. Try to minimize what you will put on the heading by which you will be able to get the call letter to that address. That is the only function. You do not have to give lot of details there. And do not write resume at the top. Do not say resume of so and so, leave it. So, it again creates a very bad impression and more than that you are also saving one line. And remember, if you can give one page resume, you are going to create a very terrific impression. So, if you can save line by line, that is how you will be able to make it concise, precise and very effective. The next thing that comes or in a sense that is on the top is career objective. <coughs> now, this is included for a specific targeted position that is said at the outset itself. It is omitted on a general resume. If it is, a, if it is just sending a resume for any job opportunity, so then it is omitted. How does it help? It helps the recruiter to classify the resume, identify what is your focus and what do they want and they can classify. Look at an example of an objective. To gain experience in computer hardware and develop a next generation computer prototype. To achieve a challenging position in sales marketing, another example. So, the first one it is like a computer whiz kid. He wants something in the hardware area and develop something. The second one, it is a kind of person who is in the management side, he is interested in sales and marketing. So, this is how you position in terms of objective. Next comes educational qualifications, shortly put as education. It includes the most relevant educational qualifications, which you have done particularly at UG, PG level. And if a postdoc doc experience is there, that is doctoral, PhD, 
and after PhD that also is mentioned. But basically at the entry level it is UG PG qualification, it avoids school record unless you have exceptional school record, okay, internationally commendable uh, achievement at school level, otherwise it generally avoids because the latest is given importance. Focuses on major fields of study, degree, year of graduation, GPA, class ranking and refers to courses only if related to the position sought, otherwise if the courses are of general nature even this part is avoided. It includes of course certificates of major seminars, conferences, workshops attended. This is followed by work experience or employment history. Now sometimes it appears before education if it is relevant for the post applied. So the sequence changes, if you want to focus first work experience and it is relevant then you keep it one step above than education. It begins with the most recent employment, again if you have a very past employment details, so that goes at the bottom level and if you think that it is not relevant even you can omit it. Selectively focuses on the relevant ones, omits which are not that relevant. What kind of details are used here? It details the employer, company's name, address, dates, job title, significant activities, accomplishments, promotions and if you got promotions within less stipulated period of time you can highlight that because you are a very active and dynamic and uh, uh, well accomplishing person, so it could be highlighted. But in all these cases when you say something try to be more specific, example instead of serving during my tenure there. I served many clients, I served many clients, instead of saying that you can say I served 150 clients over a period of 13 months. So telling exactly the number, exactly the period is again making it specific, you cannot leave anything to vagueness. Make it effective by using action words, some examples very quickly use action words like coordinated, developed, delegated, directed, organized, supervised, collaborated, evaluated, investigated, surveyed, maintained, programmed, solved, adapted, enabled, facilitated, trained, encouraged, appraised, managed, planned, researched, created, designed, established, demonstrated, pioneered achieved, improved, monitored, streamlined, identified, etc. Use action verbs, action words, so that you show that you are dynamic in your profile itself. Talking about skills and capabilities which is the next item, it showcases skills and abilities that makes the candidature desirable for the post what kind of skills and abilities, for example you can talk about your proficiency in report writing, writing skills as such including your communication skills. So mind you in the lecture on report writing it is highlighted that when you go for a job 70 percent of your time is spent in either reading or writing or doing some kind of research for writing a report. But if you can showcase that as a talent, report writing skills, nothing like that. Computer programming, so talk about what kind of programming, detail it. Handling of special machines, equipment, knowledge of foreign languages, especially the company has lot of MNCs located in various parts of the globe. So you are a very highly needed person for them and in all these cases you can use phrases like competent in, trained in, skilled in, proficient with, ability to. So again use these kind of uh, phrases just to focus it properly. Awards, honors and activities is little bit tricky because if you do not have lots of awards and honors, just one or two, you can just put that under activities. 
and highlight the award or honor that you have got. But in case you have more than 2, 3, then put them under this category. Mention under act activities only if there are only few awards and honors. Otherwise, include awards which means scholarships, financial or otherwise, fellowships, honors, recognition, commendations. So, even commendation letters will also come under this category and be specific again here. How can you be specific? <coughs> if you say for example, I am the recipient of Green Globe Award. Now, very few people may know what is this Green Globe Award, how significant is that. But if you say for example, I received the Green Globe Award from whom? From the Environment Society, which is a very uh, big international uh, society, Geneva for producing the best model on what? Eco safe car. So, he did something really innovative to do with the environment and that is why he got this award otherwise you would not have got it. So, here again you are showcasing your talent even when you mention about this award. What about personal data? Generally, it avoids personal data related to height, weight, religious affinity, age, religion, marital status, etcetera, which has been told to you when you uh, found the difference between bio data and resume. But in terms of personal data, it includes hobbies, it includes special interests. So, special interest even today uh, things to do with environment, your interest in uh, protecting endangered animals. These come under special interest and hobbies, even the normal ones like photography and gardening, even that you can mention, trucking, mountaineering, traveling. So, this will again try to show them your level of fitness and interest. So, if they have to send you for some travel and all that, they know that you are the right person. References are favored only by some recruiters. Okay. So, most of the times if they do not need any references, it is not given, it also saves space, it gives an elegant look. But in case you give, sometimes they go for one, two, but at least always keep three references at your, uh, it should be handy for you. So, when you ask them, so they should be able to give it within a short notice. So, you should inform them that you are applying for the jobs and keep them handy. They could be instructors or your employers or the highest designated officials like principals, vice principal or chairman, vice chairman, director, deputy director and so on. Even when you give them add their address quickly, email id and contact number and as a rule avoid friends and relatives in this case. Remember writing your resume is an opportunity to write your future. Keep that in mind. So, when you are writing your resume, you are writing, you are sealing your fate, you are writing your future. So, it is important to keep some of the points which I told at the beginning, the three P's of writing, be purposeful, be people oriented, think about the audience and go for this the post editing stage in writing where you give your resume to somebody, ask for the person to go through the resume, give suggestions, ask the person honestly whether that person will be able to give you the job if he is the employer. Look for the spell checks, look for the errors, look for improving your vocabulary, look for repositioning some of the items you have kept in terms of organization keep telling you again and again, this is your chance to write or rewrite your future. What should you do? So, the enough amount of uh, proofreading, the time that you spent, any amount of time that you spent in revising this, rereading, revising that, making lot of drafts and even making it look elegantly. 
spending time in that, changing the font size, repositioning. So, everything is going to reward you. The first impression is going to be created by the resume, even before you face the people in the interview. Sometimes, as I said, they do not even call for interview, they talk to you on phone and finalize the deal. So, in that case, it is the resume that is going to create the first and the lasting impression. So, it is worth paying sufficient time, devote time, pay attention and if you follow the tips and suggestions given here, if you go through whatever I have said once again, you will be able to really write a very good resume and you will be able to get that job that you are seeking for. Now, there are lots of resume and the common one that you find in Wikipedia is one sample resume for a single page. If you look at it, so you see this is the heading he has given, name and then address, zip etcetera is given and then the objective design apparel print for an innovative retail company, education is given, so college design etcetera. So, this side the, if you see the year, the dates are given and on the left it is education and then work experience. So, there are about four places where the work experience is given and then volunteer experience is also given, the target corporation is given. If you look at this sample, the references are not given, probably it was thought that the references are not required. Now, let us quickly look at some more uh, examples and you can take a look at the reference if you want to look them in terms of book, but there are uh, various university sites, especially if you are more concerned about going for foreign university, foreign job. So, it is better that you go to some university sites like uh, University of Berkeley, for example, has this career profile itself and then has lot of sample resumes. Look at some of them very quickly. This is a chronological resume and this is given for teaching position. Now, look at the candidate. So, she is Alicia is looking for a teaching position, name is there. I told you that sometimes for elegance, so the entire space is occupied, left side you have this address, on the right side you have this email ID and look at her objective, school district teaching internship past CBEST June 2002. So, this is the objective, education is focused, BA American studies, experience in terms of two, three uh, places it is focused. And then in terms of activities, so her ability as a chairperson, what she directed, what kind of recruitment she did and apart from that her editorial skills, so managing editor for something and overall the skills proficient in conversational Spanish, so the foreign language cutting edge and then apart from that use of computer and internet skills. Now, the same application, this is in chronological order and for a job position. Now, the same candidate, if she is applying for a marketing position, the order is slightly changed and then the skill set is focused. So, this is functional resume, skills and functional resume. Now, here what she does, the name again address everything is there, but the objective has changed entry level marketing position. Education again is mentioned here, but instead of the experience, skills is highlighted, marketing management, what she coordinated, what she organized, what she achieved etcetera. So, there are number of achievements to quantify her uh, resume and then communication, creativity, software applications and experience is not highlighted, it is just very quickly summarized at the end. And if you look at one more example of a chronological resume for an architecture position, look at the way the heading is given, here the heading everything is centered, education, relevant courses, relevant experience, leadership positions. Now, what the candidate has done differently is that he has used lot of bullet points just to draw attention to the action verbs 
leadership positions. So, here again he is describing campus leadership activities as vice president, executive vice president, house manager and then uh, as student director what all he did and then concludes by skills and affiliations. So, these three examples are uh, good enough to tell you how you can change a chronological one into a skill based one. Hopefully, they have given you sufficient information about writing a good resume. I wish you all the best to write a good resume and I hope this will be of great help in achieving success in your life and career. Thank you so much.